can find yourself and try to work together. Okay, uh, if somebody, somebody else or, or not, Reni, Reni is also here. I'm not sure if Reni has a microphone. Uh, Raina Belcheva, she works also for uh, International Institutes for Cooperation, but also represents um, Sports Orienteering Club, which is doing activities, sports activities, um, and helps the, um, how to say, uh, helps the communication, the communication between different social groups through sports. <laughs> and uh, maybe Rumi, Rumi, you can put your microphone or Rumiana Davidova. I can sell, uh, okay, Reni has already presented herself. And uh, Rumi is a person, um, she represents Perspectives Foundation. She's works, she works with a specific social group which are prostituting young men and women. And she's uh, working on the prevention for that, uh, for that um, specific group. Uh, and Georgi Milku from Bulgaria. Georgi is very, uh, he's an old member of the Annalyn Foundation in Bulgaria. And he's really working to establish the social justice in our country. He's uh, pursuing all the time all governments and institutions that are not doing uh, their job properly. Uh, he makes a lot of videos now and uh, go and takes them, takes the institutions to court when they are not obeying, uh, when they are not complying with legislation and human rights. Okay, so now. Uh, hello. Hello. Sorry. I'm sorry, I uh, could not uh, open my microphone, so I had some technical issues. Um, I'm Selim from uh, Tunisia, from the Association We Love SUS. Yes, Selim, nice meeting you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I, I have one more person here with me, David. Hello, hello everybody. I think I know many, many of you personally. Uh, my name is David Rayal. I'm uh, Project Coordinator in International Institute for Cooperation and uh, working also uh, from the Alin Foundation from since 2013. Since, uh, it's exactly when I started working for, for the organization in Bulgaria. Now we have also our offices here in Spain and we are going to also be part of the, of the net, Spanish network of the Alin. And uh, I'm happy to have you all here. I will be here next to Costa Rica. You will not see me, but I will be here in case that uh, you need me for anything or or whatever. Thank you very much all to be here. So uh, at the moment we are in Spain and we are combining the work that we have in Spain and in yeah. Bulgaria. So now um, uh, I'm waiting also for, I, I'll just uh, share a few, a few words. Uh, let me see if um, Miki, 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 we can present Miki, but okay, hello. Just say which organization and your name Miki. Yeah, hello to everyone. I'm sorry because I'm a little bit late. I didn't uh, uh, notice the point that we have no uh, same time in Bulgaria and Bosnia. So my name is uh, Miralem Tursinovic and I'm coming from the Youth Research Center in Tuzla, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and I'm also the coordinator, national coordinator of the Annalyn Foundation Network in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I would like to thank you, and sorry because I, I'm, let's say, quite late so far, but I, I, will, I try to manage everything within the this meeting thank you it's very we nice. love you and we love you uh, uh, even even this even late. Uh, we so love you also milan <laughs> what what anis i love him also miki <laughs> it's it's all about love the foundation is all about love he's a lovely guy yeah and this is the way how we should uh, uh, we should approach every human being and that will save us a lot of pro problems so um, I, I just have to explain to the young people and all the members of the net of, uh, that are present here uh, why we chose the dialogue. Dialogue is very important in our communities. Uh, dialogue is the basis of our understanding and our social change. In order to know how to, how to say, to approach 
groups, of, uh, certain groups of people we know, uh, we know how, we should know how to lead the dialogue. Uh, there, there are many formal or informal ways of leading dialogue. There are many means to do, to, to lead the dialogue because uh, the means can be sport, can be culture, can be education. Uh, and culture has many other, um, how to say, perspectives like photography, theater. Uh, there are many, many ways to approach certain groups and we have to know with which group we are working and how we want to reach them. So there are many, many means to uh, access that, that groups and to have very successful and meaningful dialogue and also many successful and meaningful communication with them in order to uh, help say, uh, uh, meet, help, no, 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 to decrease the distance or even to break the distance at all to break the and, and build a, a stable bridge between those cultures. Because nowadays our societies are becoming more and more um, homo, um, not homogeneous, uh, not hetero, uh, hetero, heterogeneous, uh, with um, consisting of a lot of cultural groups, ethnic minority groups, a lot of religious groups, and a lot of cultural groups. Within our uh, homogeneous society, there are many, uh, many cultural groups uh, that become thriving. Uh, so we have to be more and more aware of the diversity, but how to bring that, that how to get that diversity together for the sake of uh, common values, this is our, this is our role and this is the dialogue that we have to lead. So um, I will, I will give the floor because Mickey is here. Um, he already presented himself. Uh, recently within Annalyn Foundation activities, they organized a festival and um, it's Festival of Cultures. So he's going to tell us more about the festival as a way of bringing uh, young people together and people belong, young people belonging to different cultural groups. So Miki, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Kostlinka. Uh, before I, I, I talk about the festival, which we have in, 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 in Tuzla last month, I would like to uh, point one thing which is, let's say, very special in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but probably in the other countries around us. So uh, we are in the, let's say, difficult position that everything which happened on the political, any other level in any states around us is flowing to, to Bosnia and we are some kind of mirror concerning the situation in the other countries. So let's say, for example, right now it's a difficult to in Bosnia, of course, to, to, to give any kind of support to Ukraine because half of the country, you know that we are, let's say, semi-divided, half of the country is for the peace in, in Europe and supporting Ukraine as the country which is attacked. But the other half of the country is in favor of Russia because they are somehow uh, think that Russia is the uh, the, the main country in, in Europe and in the world which, which can support them, help them, etc., etc. So everything is, which is happening around us somehow uh, is reflected in, in our society. And we are, uh, let's say, which is very sad, we are uh, uh, divided about any kind of the issue concerning the peace, tolerance, concerning the dialogue of the understanding, inter intercultural dialogue, etc. The the most vulnerable group who is suffering for all of this are youngsters. Youngsters in our country are not divided by the ethnicity or religion or anything else. Youngsters are on the edge of the society and mostly the uh, uh, any kind of situation affecting Bosnia, affecting youngsters because they are, let's say, more or less minority in Bosnia. Minority because a lot of them left country within a couple of last years. Uh, we have situation that in the most, and Bosnia is consisted by the smaller uh, cities, cities who have, which have like 10,000 inhabitants, 15,000, not more. There are only a few larger cities in, in, in Bosnia. And in most of those smaller cities, uh, we have right now situation that there are no youngsters. There are no any kind of initiative of the youth because youngsters are not passive, they are missing. We have the situation and in last, uh, four or five years, we have like more than 300,000 population left from the country, not because of war, not because of the transition, not because of the humanitarian issues, not, 
not because of the the the, the any kind of the uh, issues with the uh, the survival like most of them who left left because they were hopeless they have good jobs their economical situation is not so bad but they left country and mainly youngsters so the, the issue in bosnia is how to keep the dialogue how to keep the intercultural dialogue with youngsters because if we don't have a youngsters that's the problem that we have a situation as most of the teachers uh, at secondary schools at universities stay without and elementary schools also stay without job because they don't have a pupils which then they will teach so the, the difficulties of that and of course difficult and uh, situation with the uh, covid pandemic uh, made us that the country is almost let's say stuck in isolation because there is no possibility for youngsters to travel from one city to another even though those two cities are 15 to 20 kilometers away the problem is that youngsters have no any kind of possibilities to to meet each other as they do that before mainly because of the not only covid situation but because of the the the, the levels of the government who are taking care only about themselves so we 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 tried to put another effort we organized before like in the last 20 years we organized a lot of the larger cultural festivals artistic festivals theater performances etc but right now it's much more much more difficult to organize it and we push our efforts to bring together like more than 70 youngsters from all over the bosnia so we organized the festival uh, titled uh, first tuzla festival and the main area of the festival was to give opportunity to the youngsters to express themselves in the cultural way but also to be together with the other youngsters so it's there is a, there was a lot of the lessons learned before all lessons learned that we have to communicate we have to bring youngsters together we have to give them a space to be together to exchange their ideas to exchange the opinions and talks about anything, but not war, etc., and to give them a space to show to the others uh, in which level of the uh, communication and especially intercultural dialogue they are. So we have a, a lot of the youth performances. We have a lot of the uh, small theater plays. Uh, we have the a couple of the exhibition of the artistic of paintings, photographs, memes. We have a three tart. We also produced a couple of the smaller documentary movies. And my main idea was to, to, to give the youngsters opportunity to come on the stage, to learn something and to be awarded for that. Even the award is only one, 200 of euros, not in money, of course, but in, in some kind of the things which they need like reflectors, like speakers, etc. But the biggest award for them was to uh, be together and express themselves together. We have a funny situation that in one of the day when we are organizing a festival in Tuzla was a huge protest supporting Ukraine and youngsters wanted to, to do something, to participate, to give some kind of small performance against the war for peace. And it was very difficult to convince the people who was with them, their, I don't know, leaders or older people who, who went with them to let them express themselves, let them support peace, not peace in Ukraine only, but peace on the world, because we are we have a lot of the countries in which uh, uh, civilians suffer, not only Ukraine, we have Palestine, we have, I don't know, Syria, we have a lot of the countries where people are actually don't know what is the peace, and the peace is the most valuable things which we need to fight, to have a peace everywhere. So that, that's why for now, if you have any question or we can continue later. Okay, thank you. That's really very, very, I mean, it's sad, but the situation in Bulgaria is the same, like young people are leaving and basically uh, they're in the focus of our work because we want to keep them here. We want them to, to be satisfied and to be happy. Um, I don't know, it's uh, because small countries, I understand when you say uh, people are leaving the country, um, 
because I'm sure that Anis will say another thing. Uh, the Arab world is um, it's a young world. A lot of young people are being born, and um, while we are aging, an aging population, uh, and in small countries, when young people leave and there is not enough uh, birth rate, uh, it happens that uh, we are in a situation of uh, the economy is not working well. But we have to have this dialogue with young people. And it's, it's really, 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 really important to, to understand their needs, to keep them where they belong and also uh, to provide them the um, normal ways of living. Also, we have lived uh, times of war and you know what it is, but also there, is, uh, there are bad civic conditions in which we are living. It's not only war, but it's not peace as well. It's not the right peace that we expect to create or to live in. Uh, I would uh, I would like to to see maybe the opinion um, of young people that are here and the other the other participants if you want to uh, to share some uh, some thoughts. I will mute myself, but maybe I don't know. Not only young people, people that are here, if they want to share any thoughts about that and how the situation, for example, in Tunisia is, it would be nice to I, I would say, like, especially in the pandemic, it was really a valuable chance for young people to connect, to be participating in such an international online programs. Um, I think the pandemic really helps in terms of awareness, raising awareness about an international communication between young people. Like I took the example um, of we as teenagers and young um, being active in our society, like trying to put an impact and inspire others um, to be more committed to um, a really national change. And I think the first step is to be more um to be more into uh, the idea of uh, communication first. That's why I mentioned the pandemic time because it was crucial for everyone, of course, all around the world, but it really has a positive side that really increases um, increased um, the chance for, for others to exchange ideas, to have different visions and to try like to overcome uh, the situation altogether. Thank you, Farah. Uh, maybe we can go and listen and we can see what Anis is going to present because you are having a lot of activities where working on uh, peace building, working with young people. So we can use what are the tools that you use in Tunisia, things that might uh, also um, we uh, approaches that maybe we can also use in our work because they are really good practices that um, work well in, in certain societies or in certain communities. Uh, they can be directly adopted and applied or they can be, uh, they can be how to say, updated or changed in order to serve uh, another cultural community or another, an, another specific community. So, uh, Anis, you can maybe share, and whenever somebody has uh, questions, you can raise hands or we, you can uh, intervene. Uh, thank you, Kostadinka. I'm sorry, I can't uh, put my uh, camera because connection is not very well. I will try to uh, develop some uh, idea uh, link to our um, activity in this very uh, difficult um, period and uh, context. Uh, I'm uh, sharing uh, the point of view of uh, Miki about uh, yeah, the situation of uh, the, war, the war in Ukraine uh, divide people also, uh, and especially about the reaction of European uh, states, because uh, we, uh, we was uh, uh, victim of this kind of illegal war. Uh, on Iraq, uh, on Palestine, on Syria also, but we didn't observe this kind of, uh, of uh, 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 the kind of reaction uh, who, uh, but uh, the, the European countries was uh, the countries who uh, invite other countries. So uh, Tunisian people also are divided between uh, the different uh, 
a point of view, uh, they are not uh, with the war, but they don't understand the reaction of, uh, of uh, some uh, countries uh, when they are uh, sometimes actor of other war in other region and, uh, of the world, but uh, they are, uh, they are, uh, yeah, now we saw that they are not, uh, uh, they are not, uh, they don't try to find solution, uh, peaceful solution for this uh, situation. I would like to discuss about uh, what happened in Tunisia. Um, you, young people with the pandemic situation, with uh, this uh, crisis in uh, the, the war in uh, Ukraine, with the economic crisis, the very, 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 very strong economic crisis in uh, Tunisia. Uh, people and young uh, people uh, are. Uh, uh, trying um, to develop more and more their network outside uh, Tunisia, and for this reason, we would like we try to develop um, some answer. Try to develop this uh, kind of uh, dialogue between uh, people and uh, to uh, develop also the knowledge of other, because we are afraid also always about what we uh, we we don't know. And we are afraid about uh, other who uh, is a stranger. So we are we trying always to develop this kind of communication through many activities, many projects to fight violent extremism, to fight uh, hate speech, to fight uh, uh, the xenophobia, to fight uh, racism, etc. So uh, I think that during this period, more than any other period, dialogue. Uh, intercultural activities, uh, uh, festivals, uh, forums, etc., are more, more, more than needed because we uh, face a huge number of misunderstanding, of uh, hopeless, of many other problems faced to young people. We developed the Euro Arab Youth Forum, which is a huge platform of dialogue between young people. Uh, through uh, 15, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less countries who came to Tunisia to discuss, to develop their recommendation, to develop their vision, to know themselves and to know the others. That's very important to develop this kind of platform of dialogue and platform of common work and to develop the, their mutual uh, understanding and mutual uh, vision. We develop also the uh, International Festival of World Music, which is a platform also for artists to dialogue, to discuss, to expose their work, and to go to the Tunisian people to show them their art, their music, their vision of a thing, and to show them other parts of this world. That's very important, and I think that uh, more than never, we need to develop a cultural and to develop a dialogue activity, even in the war period, because uh, the war period, the war is one of a result of misunderstanding. It's one of result of uh, that we ignore others and we ignore uh, the need of others and how other uh, think and how the vision of others. So I'm. Um, I can speak till tomorrow, but uh, really I would like to be short and, and here to and to try to discuss and to know the vision of other participants today and to know how they consider the dialogue, how they consider this interculturality, especially in this very, very, very difficult context, a problematic context, war context, uh, uh, then more than ever we need to. Uh, stay and to discuss and to uh, develop the dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Anis. So uh, it's very interesting what you're saying, and I know about this platform. I would just like to, to ask you to develop more about Europe, uh, Europe Arab Forum. Is the uh, yes, yes, the Euro Arab Youth Forum. The Euro Arab Youth Forum was an idea developed. Uh, during the 
um, uh, Sfax, which is a town in Tunisia, uh, Arab cultural uh, capital. Uh, you know, as European uh, cultural capital, we have the Arab cultural capital. So in 2017, uh, we developed during this manifestation, during this period, the Euro Arab Youth Forum, and we uh, and, uh, we invited uh, head of networks, and we invited the many network from Analyn Foundation. Analyn Foundation was a partner uh, to this uh, forum, and we developed. Uh, um, it was uh, three days of workshops, uh, of dialogue, of uh, artistic activities uh, to uh, finally uh, have a final recommendation uh, to uh, uh, advocate those recommendation with Arab League with the European Union, with the uh, uh, Arab Maghreb Union, uh, with different uh, regional institutions uh, to say that that's what uh, 100 youth uh, discussed during three days, and uh, that's what well, that's their uh, recommendation and uh, suggestion to face the different problems because we um, start from the con from the um, observation that um, it's true that we have a huge uh, tools of communication uh, social media etc but we uh, we we observe that unfortunately people don't communicate together don't discuss together the xenophobia the racism the hate speech is more and more present in our life and in our uh, daily um, work we saw a lot of uh, incidents uh, in uh, in uh, public sphere in political sphere in social sphere and even in economic sphere uh, linked to Do you do you hear Anis? No. Anis, can you hear? Because I I, I lost him. He's not, maybe he has to reconnect. If I, if I can add something. Yes, you can uh, add, uh, yes. Until Anis come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with uh, most of the things Anis said, but I, I don't want to, to, to to be a pessimistic too much, but I think that somehow we, uh, all of us, are missing the point that because of the globalization and global media and everything that's yeah. happening I'm around sorry. us. Ah, I'm you are here. You. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, the, I uh, lost the connection. I'm so sorry. Huh? Now it's too late. Okay, Milam, I'm hearing it and I will, cont I will co continue after. No, no, okay? no, no, just continue. I will, I will wait. Okay, thank you. So, so this, uh, this observation that, and as Milan said now, that the result of globalization, unfortunately, is less of dialogue and less of communication. We live in a global world with a lot of uh, communication and um, social media, etc., uh, tools, but we don't communicate on the um, on the capital uh, topic and on the capital problems, etc. So those kind of platforms, the Euro Arab Youth Forum, and I hope that we will uh, organize it for 2022. We are preparing the, uh, the new edition. We develop this context 
a platform of dialogue between people because between the Euromed region, because we saw that we have a lot of problems, a problem of migration, a problem of uh, refugees, a problem of war, a problem of xenophobia, racism, etc., violence, extremism, uh, violent extremism. And when we talk about uh, violent extremism, we are talking about uh, ideological extremism, but also uh, political extremism. Yeah, many, many, many kind of extremism. So I think that we need to develop more and more this kind of platform. And I saw that people, can you imagine that we uh, invite people, Italian people who saw uh, Egyptian people or Tunisian people for the first time during those, uh, in their lives, during those kind of uh, forum and they discuss and they saw that those people are not finally are not so different that they can be amazing that they can be open and take uh, a lot etc so we are not uh, so different but we need to understand our differences and we need to understand that we should discuss together and talk together to develop more and more to build peace because peace is a process is not uh, like you know i'm in peace i live in peace in my country but i don't care about what happens outside it's a continuous process and a global process to develop this peace and to develop this uh, uh, environment uh, uh, of uh, dialogue and environment of uh, to build together uh, that's i i hope that it's answer to your question, uh, Costa. I think I can, yeah, perhaps after develop this the different uh, aspects of the forum and how can uh, it can be uh, developed. Thank you, Nis. Uh, that's really. Um, I'll give the floor to to Miki. The thing is that what you said there are two two main issues. There are so many channels and so many ways that we can communicate, but there is, we communicate, but this that does not mean dialogue. We don't understand each other. We don't communicate in the way that we can uh, understand or uh, uh, create empathy or try to understand the values on which we stand. Because basically when you understand that the person next to you share the same human values, then we are equal. We are not so much divided. And this is uh, that's why we want to provide those kind of um, uh, those kind of uh, atmosphere or means where people can meet, uh, where they can dialogue, not just communicate. And uh, the process, the processes that we were thinking about, for example, there is war in Ukraine or in the Middle East, or uh, there's some uh, crisis uh, somewhere in the world that they do not affect us. This is not true because. Um, we are interconnected so much in our in this global world that all those effects uh, they impact us indirectly and very while it's an indirect impact very soon they become very re real in our societies like hatred hate speech um, I don't know political crisis economic crisis that affect us but it's already too late to counteract those effects. So the good thing is to be aware of what is happening all around us and to be prepared. And, and this is the only way that we can to communicate. And those uh, platforms that um, the, the Europe Arab Forum and there is the virtual exchange, maybe I would like to present this practice uh, in the next, uh, the next um, webinar, which was uh, coordinated by Anne Lind and the German network. Uh, the virtual youth exchange between um, between different countries was a very good practice as well. Meet cultures, meet people, understand the common values between us. And I'll give uh, the floor to Mickey because he was interrupted by us. I'll mute myself. Okay. So once again, I don't want to be too much pessimistic. But I think, and this webinar shows us that somehow when we are starting to have a dialogue, it's always with the, let's say, small fishes at the pound. So we have Bulgaria, Tunisia, and Bosnia here. Uh, somehow I, I believe 
that because of the global international companies needs and issues we somehow stay without solidarity somehow we missed that point of the solidarity among the people all around so the on one point we have the i don't want to blame anyone of course on one point we have european union and you are considering also a member of european union who is acting with hypocrisy like they support all of the dialogue all of the peace all of the everything which is good but when the times came to be in order to support some small country nothing happens so i believe as anis says that there is a lot of the xenophobia right racism and everything else but not in our countries the, the biggest issue in europe right now is racism xenophobia chauvinism hate speech etc etc so that's the problem that's the point like you you know uh, david was in 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 alexandria and uh, anis was uh, online uh, when we started to try to find some way to support ukraine to support peace with some, any kind of announcement or 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 letter or everything which can even support with nice words some country we couldn't make it because the huge network of the organizations and countries which are let's say fighting for peace didn't react in order to be good with everyone so that's the problem we cannot start any kind of initiative any kind of the peace talk any kind of the the, the solidarity issue towards the suffering country suffering people civilians because everything has to be in order we don't we need to be good with everyone so that's why we can take a sides i can freely take a side i'm for peace i know what happened what's what's happening in ukraine even i don't listening all of those media crossing media posts etc but i know how the civilians felt there how they are feeling it was same like the it's same like in my country or any other any other country who have a war so war when you have a war the politicians the people who have power who have money who have everything who kept the situation are not in danger the normal people normal citizens normal youngsters child are in danger so right now we have we have among the migrants and refugees we don't have we we have more and more of them not only from syria and the other countries in, in the arab uh, countries but we have them right now from ukraine and no one wants to support that no one wants to help them it's a question of the people who are accepting them so that's the issue that's the issue of dialogue because we are somehow speaking about the peace but no one is trying to make that peace everyone wants to support ukraine right now with the weapons which is let's say good but it's not good if you give some somebody someone if you give them bullets or if you give them i don't know weapons it's not good they will kill another people they will kill more more and more and more people you have to to know that mo most of those soldiers from russia are soldiers aged 18 19 20 they are sent somewhere to to not to create dialogue but to kill someone to liberate someone liberate in brackets so what's the liberation why we are don't talking to each other creating some kind of the let's say positive narratives open narratives dialogues we are in situation that we are i don't know afraid about everyone we are afraid about someone who is black or white or yellow or green or 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 red or whatever because we think that that person is different that we are not different we are all the same scratch your skin and you will find the blood so that's that's the issue that's the problem because we are somehow believing too much to to the media to large media and we are believing everything which they said which means that we have no our personal opinion we have opinion of the others and most of us have a opinion of the others 
which is not good. Let's divide, create our own opinion. Even that opinion is wrong, but let's create opinion in order to talk, to see that we are, let's say, we are different, but we are the same. To find the, the ways to, to approach to each other, to find the ways to work with each other, to find the ways to, I don't know, love someone or hate someone but on our, our, our own opinion, not on opinion of the others of the huge, I don't know, huge fishes in the, the, the dam. So we are, I don't know, we have to do something if we, if we want to change something and that something is solidarity. We have to be solidar. Even the things are happening a thousands of kilometers away from our country, we have to be solidar because all of us are people, especially youngsters, all of us together, all of us can think on the same way and can do something. So Costa Dinka, I know that this is, uh, this, is nice. this is possible. This is very powerful talk, Miki. I was listening to you and my hair bristles. Like it's a, um, it's kind of protest within myself because I understand what you're talking. And also you have lived this experience. It's not because you are preaching because you have gone through as Bosnia and Herzegovina in the, in the times of the war and the conflicts. And it's, it's crazy. That's why I believe that the dialogue should go down to the very basic level, not expect uh, institutions and so on. We have to, people have to understand because now we are tightening very much the, the, the link. We are not talking about black and white. We are not talking yellow and, uh, and white. Um, not on a, we are talking that there is a lack of understanding and, and mis misunderstanding or lack of communication in our small communities where we are divided by beliefs, by, I don't know, by uh, perceptions that have been created, as you said, by other opinion. And the conflict starts from our small communities that have been united. And that's why I want to create this kind of understanding based on empathy and understanding people, not as, as solidarity, um, not on forming opinions and informed uh, informed opinion, as we said. We are human beings with common, with, with common values. And uh, I don't know, um, it will be really nice to hear the other human story of uh, Faye Eshkevari. She has been living in Bulgaria for more than 10 years. And uh, Faye, is, um, Faye is an activist, uh, she's she's an Iranian journalist. Uh, also, she's a translator, a teacher, uh, and uh, she's an environmentalist. I would like. I don't want to present Faye my way. I have here a long list of things, but I would like Faye to present herself. Yesterday, within the within the uh, this project, we recorded a podcast that will be released uh, very soon. And I suppose it will be very interesting to hear her story. Now Faye will share her story and because uh, I want to know from the other side how she's leading the dialogue with the host community. Was it difficult? How it was because she came with no language, um, coming from different culture, cultural background, starting living in Bulgaria. What, was, were you accepted Faye? Uh, was it difficult for you to, to integrate? Um, I don't know, what were the obstacles that you faced? Uh, also legislative, because I know that until recently you, you didn't have any documents, you had the status of refugee. And also Faye is working with one of our organizations in Bulgaria, very active one in, on the network, uh, doing forum theater as a means to connect people and uh, uh, understand the social problems. And also, just before I give the floor to Faye, there is Greta. Greta from the Italian network is with us. Greta, if you have some inputs. Yes, uh, maybe you should give the floor to Faye. Yes, and then yeah. later, yes. Okay, so okay Greta. So. Thank you. I lost your voice. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. I hear you because I muted. I'm really happy that you are here with us. Thank you for. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, the the thing our friend said about Ukraine just uh, is still sinking in, in in me because it's something my friends are already in Ukraine, and that's something that we have to really react to. Uh, uh, but related to the question that that you had, um, um, how to build this relation and how to play this bridge? 
on the one side, we have this host society who just filters uh, whoever comes and they categorize you as either a refugee or a foreigner. If you are a foreigner, you're well off. If you are a refugee who speaks local language uh, without a um, certain level of fluency, you are labeled and marginalized. And I chose to become a foreigner for a long time instead of being a refugee. It just took me uh, over a decade to, to be powerful enough, feeling enough courage in me to introduce myself as a refugee. And that, that came when I decided to play the role uh, for the people who already are refugees and they, they, don't, they, they don't speak any other language. Uh, they, they have their local language, mother tongue, and then they have to learn broken Bulgarian, let's say. Bulgarian is a difficult language. Um, it's, it's something that you have to have a stickler, a mother, a father, a grandmother, and then the, the school uh, after 20, after 12 years, you would still uh, type the same question that I type. Is it says, U, Ili, uh, O. <laughs> or what is the, the, the plural of cappuccino? Nobody knows. People, people fight over what is the, the proper noun, uh, the proper way of that, and then I leave. So I believe that what we can do as a, as a host society is lifting the filter because we perceive every foreigner, every refugee with a filter. We filter out only the misery. Um, we are only interested in miserable stories, not in uh, interesting stories. Every person is a combination of all kinds of stories. Why should we only listen to a filtered out and only uh, bad ruined stories? Uh, that's our choice and we can deprive ourselves as a host society to which story or what story we can listen to. President, I don't hear you. This is I, I have to, mute, to mute, uh, unmute myself. So uh, would you like just to say how you use the theater of the oppressed, with which kind of groups you are working and how it helps because it's a very powerful tool. I myself used it once, not once, uh, once in my lifetime, it was several projects that we organized with uh, young uh, drug, drug addicted people. Uh, it was very powerful, but uh, I've never used with um, like migrants or refugees. Uh, but you can maybe tell the basis of um, the, how it works and is it, uh, is it effective? I believe uh, uh, depending on what goal you set, it, it might be effective. Sometimes people uh, need quick results. Like for example, in the case of war, maybe uh, it's not as powerful as a country reacting to some, um, um, like deciding something because every uh, decision needs to be backed by the society. And that comes from the agreement that comes from within the society, let's say. Uh, therefore, um, yes, it has been powerful. Uh, it has been building um, a social discourse. And um, in some countries with prepared uh, mindset of the people, uh, the ones that organizations listen to people, they have been even able to change the laws, the, the regional and uh, even legislative of the whole country. Uh, I'm not sure in Bulgaria if we can do that. But we have been, um, I mean, for my country, Iran, it's a no-no for sure. At least in Bulgaria, there is a hope. In my country, may, maybe uh, it, it needs a drastic change or something. Um, so, but, but we do have it in Iran too. Uh, we are leading two projects right now. One is with Bulgarians. The other is we are starting to talk about how we can apply that uh, with uh, Iranian workers in Iran, this is also very much um, uh, done and practiced also in Iran. It's not mm, uh, unrecognized. A lot of people have been uh, experiencing uh, the theater of the oppressed in Iran. I don't know if this is necessary to talk about that at all. So the theater of the oppressed is- Yes. Mm -hmm. it's the theater of the oppressed based on Augusto Boal's theory of encouraging the social discourse started when people 
did not or were not able to pay a um, huge expense of being able to talk freely in the public. They decided to use theatrical methods in a way that they could mimic or um, um, play a situation where people can react and change the, the result of one scene or uh, react toward um, um, a situation or an image that imagine that if a person is beating another person or verbally abusing another person and there are some people passing and that's a frozen image like uh, you are watching an image in mommy uh, um, uh, uh, statues but you, you, what's happening and people have ideas on how to change that situation so people's idea is uh, you give uh, power to your uh, audience to be able to change that scenario and that's what we are trying to do in Bulgaria a lot of people have been taking part uh, but it's not consistent because of it hasn't been consistent so far because of the COVID yet it was very interesting a lot of people were looking for to continue it um, and um, they they had very positive reviews um, in Iran, I don't know how I can do it, but uh, we are trying to use some um, um, online methods with online basis so that we can talk about um, workers' rights, uh, which is very much uh, marginalized. Workers are the, the marginalized group with after very rigged uh, privatizations that um, are done with governmental people. Um, this is uh, the, the, the scale of the looting and um, wasting national properties is huge right now. It has never been like that. And people are, I mean, workers are deprived of their basic rights, which is the um, um, bargaining and um, making communities and being able to form any kind of group. This is labeled as um, an act against the country. So, um, yeah, what we have done so far in Bulgaria has been only image theater, which means just a situation when people can react to without actually playing. Um, we will be able, I mean, I hope we are able to do it also for um, um, refugees, because so far it has been only for general public to test and try what it has been like with an international participant group. Thank you, Faye, for your input. It's very important, but I also believe that it, it's also, it will work with refugees because some people even cannot speak, so they have to express themselves. And uh, unfortunately, in Bulgaria, we can also, we cannot change legis legislation with that. We're not so powerful, although we would like to, but at least we get the um, a real, uh, how to say, uh, image of what the needs are of, the, of that group, of those groups. Needs that would not be extracted by sociological uh, surveys because they are on an emotional level, on an emotional base. So it's, uh, it's a powerful tool. And I suppose, Miki, maybe you have used uh, uh, this theater as a tool or not? And Greta, I don't know. One thing before, Miki, please don't forget what you were saying. We had some obstacles doing it with refugees during Corona, but we will be starting, right? Thank you. We will expect uh, results. It will be interesting to, to follow. Miki, have you used uh, Theatre the Oppressed? Because you're using a lot of creative uh, tools with young people. Have you ever used Theatre the Oppressed? Yes, yes, many times, many times. And it's some kind of the, let's say, for, for my point of my, myself, it's healing theatre. It's not just theater, but it's healing theater. And I, let's say, have experience, which I can offer to every one of you if you want. You just have to invite me. Uh, around the table. And I will come. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, I think that, the, sorry, I think that the, the forum theater is the one of the oppressed theater, theater of oppressed is one of the way to heal the people, you know, because you are... Uh, <clears throat> You are not just participating, but you are deeply inside of that. And I, I believe that that's one of the way out for this terrible situation. But there is also some other of the, 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 the theaters and things which can be offered to youngsters. My proposal is let's make a, some kind of the action point in which we can 
I don't know, exchange the experiences and do uh, forum theaters, uh, theater for press and everyone others, all of the, those, those uh, uh, pedagogical, let's say, methodolo methodology mm -hmm. to learn each other, but also to be with each other. So mm -hmm. that's my proposal. I can come to Costa Dinka in the yeah, next 20 days to... to Anis and Greta can tell, maybe we can involve some of the networks and we can do simultaneously see what is the results in each country. This is how a project was born when we had a webinar with other networks to cook together and do cooking projects, understand how close our, our cuisines are. So this can be a theater of the oppressed uh, project. So we let's, can let's, let's make it. Let's make it, yes, let's go. Yeah. So Greta I'm always in. Uh, if Mickey, uh, if Mickey is uh, the the trainer, uh, I'm always uh, in. As usual, Mickey is one of the most important head of network in Alalin Foundation uh, during uh, all uh, its existence. <laughs> blushing, blushing, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Anis. Uh, Greta, would you like to share your experience? Yes. Um, first of all, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here. And I couldn't really follow the whole thing, but I heard a couple of uh, very interesting intervention, especially uh, with regard to the importance of dialogue, uh, also facing a situation like the one we are living right now in Ukraine and uh, uh, the saddening uh, news that we hear every day. Um, what it can bring to the table is uh, our experience as an Italian network uh, when dealing with dialogue, especially in the, in the field of uh, conflict uh, prevention rather than uh, healing in itself, because prevention is always uh, the, the best uh, way to go in our opinion. And uh, what we try to do is to bring different identities, different cultures. Uh, so we, we speak about collective identities. Um, of the Mediterranean especially, uh, to talk, especially on, um, let's say, non-divisive issues, which might be um, stemming from cuisine to sustainability to uh, culture. We had several initiatives in this sense. So to bring parties we generally are in conflict to talk about less sensitive issues at first in order to bridge us and to, to, to uh, let's say, build a sense of, of trust and confidence among each other. So uh, that's what we are trying to do. We are also trying to um, establish a center where people from the Mediterranean, especially women and youth, will have the possibility to confront and to discuss and to, um, and to grow from each other's experience and to, first of all, better understand the culture of each other. Because in my personal opinion, uh, most of the conflicts emerge in the Mediterranean area, especially from uh, not knowing the ideas, not really from a sense of ignorance, let's say, uh, of the other of the other culture. So that's uh, that's what I can say about. And um, I hope to involve all of all of you as well. I would really like to cooperate with all of the networks that I had the chance to meet uh, in Egypt, especially and. Uh, I think uh, there is a possibility uh, and a margin to, to improve in this sense. Thank you. The... Okay, so that was really, really nice uh, intervention from your side because we were talking about already healing, uh, uh, conflicts or uh, yes, curing the situations, but it's about uh, prevention and uh, trying to overcome the ignorance that we have about each other. Um, this is this was really really nice and uh, hearing this. It can be if somebody would like to comment something, um, we can leave it this way open. And tomorrow we can we are going to meet for another. Um, another webinar where I would like to hear the experience of other networks and other, um, we're going to evolve sport as a means of uh, communication and uh, get getting people closer. Uh, so it will be, if, if you would like to join us tomorrow, it will be the same time. Uh, somebody would like to comment on, on Greta's uh, um, uh, presentation. So, the same. 
the center you're building, it will be about communication and using, you're going to talk about non-sensitive issues, you know, to make people meet people. Yes. It's a center on sustainability, and I will be a center for higher education and science diplomacy. So especially devolved to women and youth, and although also to fight the labor needs match in the Mediterranean. And we are already cooperating this initiative is since 2019 uh, with other uh, eight uh, head of networks at the NLN Foundation, but we really like to include more and more networks uh, in the next future. And uh, tomorrow we will have an event on this. So it will really be nice for us to, to share these experiences with you and exchange among the networks. Greta, is it, is it in Rome? It is in Rome. Uh, it is in hybrid form though. So if you want to, uh, to see it, I will share the link. <laughs> on 9th to 11th, we will be in Rome. Is, oh, really? But it's tomorrow, the meeting is tomorrow. Yeah, oh, no. I'm in the billionaire building. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Center, the center. See, yes. It would be nice to, to, see, to you. see you to see you there. Yes. Oh no, the center is on the island of Ponza. Uh, <laughs> it's in front. Of, we chose this place because it's at the center of the archipelago Pontino, which is where Europe was born with the Ventotene Manifesto. So it has a huge significance to us in in terms of also uh, building confidence among countries which were previously in conflict somehow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nice and wishing you good luck and hope that we'll be able to be part of uh, that center. I mean, with it's really <coughs> amazing initiative and maybe we can uh, also join you. Absolutely, we will be glad. Thank you very much for your participation, all of you. Thank you for uh, your time and contributions. Uh, I wish you a very nice, I don't know, it's evening. It's starting being evening, yes. Uh, hope to see some of you tomorrow on the other webinar. And um, stay happy and safe and positive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mirlam, Thank you, Costa Rica, and all of you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.